Hi everyone, thank you for waiting for me. Um, this is probably the earliest I've ever been late. So, um, yeah, I stole that from Steven Tyler. I heard him say that on American Idol a while ago and I thought it was pretty witty. This is the earliest I've ever been late. Uh, <laughs> I'm a late Nick. But could you put that over here? Mm -hmm. My son is helping me, Jake. I'll introduce you to him. Hello. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you, my brother. Call me queen sister. <laughs> I don't know. I guess I can kind of be a queen now because I'm on tomorrow. Tomorrow's my birthday. And I probably shouldn't announce it. Um, but I I'm kind of happy, but I'm not happy. <laughs> because I am going to officially be a senior citizen here in the US. I am going to be 65 years old. Okay, so now all you young guys don't wanna watch me anymore because who wants to hang out with an old lady, right? But um, I like hanging out with, with young people, babies, middle-agers, it doesn't matter. Thank you, thank you for the happy birthday uh, wishes. Um, the good thing about that is uh, I'll finally be able to qualify for Medicare. <laughs> and it's a good time. I can't get sick because, uh, you know, this health insurance is crazy, really crazy. So um, uh, I just want to take a deep breath, take a deep breath, say hello, say right where you're from, okay? I have your names, but I want e you to know each other. And um, I want to shout out to the whole world that, um, you know, we're in this thing together. And though we might be, well, we're calling it social distancing. And last time I crossed out the social. Now I think I'm going to cross out the distancing because I think this is bringing us closer and less distant. So there's Canada, there's Massachusetts, Portland, Oregon, Green Bay, Wisconsin, Elizabeth from New Jersey, Elizabeth, New Jersey. Yay! Hello. Hi, Marcy. Hey, Jen, Annette, Kimberly. Some of you have different names. Silver Soul Sister. That's neat. Turkey. Yay. Thank you for joining in, Turkey. Toodley from Baton Rouge. Hi, Karen. She's faithful. Julia. Um, this week I kind of thought, you know, rather than babble, because after a while, you know, since this can only do this one way for now. Um, and I might invite people to, you know, uh, ask if they can come in. There's like the two faces at the bottom of your screen. And I think uh, if, um, if there's a request on there, I can, I can invite someone in. So I, I see a two on it. So I'm gonna press it and see who's there. But um, I thought maybe we'd do it like a simple project today. And normally I don't do projects because, um, oh, you want to be in my live video, Shelly? All right. All right. Um, let me see if I can view you. Shelly wants to be in your live video. Go live with Shelly Usher. She's a young mom. Shelly Usher declined. <laughs> chicken. Chicken. Yeah. So anyway, um, but um, yeah, after, after a couple of weeks in the house, you know, I can make a lot of small talk or I'll end up, you know, bearing all my family secrets, you know, <laughs> like I do because I'm nervously um, babbling. Oh, you're a grandmother. Oh, that's not your new baby. That's your new grandbaby, Shelly. Congratulations, congratulations. So anyway, this week I thought maybe we'd do a little, a little project, which could be fun. Um, and again, you don't have to do this project. Um, this was a result of actually spilling paint, a lot of paint. 
I had just gotten um, a container like this of this Nova paint and it's quinacridone violet. It's a very, very pigment, pigmented paint. A lot of pigment, very dense. And I was ill then and I was working on a commission and they set me up in the dining room with a cushy chair and a dining room chair uh, opposite me. And I covered it with cardboard, wrapped it with that packing stuff and kind of set up an easel. And I could kind of lean back into the chair every time I would get really, really dizzy. And so I worked from there. Long story short, um, I was working with this purple and it was, it was new. And I hit it and it spilled all over my beautiful wood floors between the dining room and the living room. And it was, it was enormous. It was enormous. And I had no idea what to do. And so I just started getting paper and tissues and I was blotting the paper on it, as many pieces of paper as I could. I was using tissues and then I was blotting the tissues on other paper. So I ended up with a lot of paper that had what I call the purple spill on it. And I did a whole series of paintings <laughs> called the purple spill because I, I, I didn't want to waste it, you know? And uh, so today, uh, most of my purple spills ended up selling. Isn't that funny? And, um, and I, you make discoveries. Like I said, don't, don't be afraid to try things. Hi, Julie. Um, and so this is one of the few remaining ones that are left of the purple spill. So since it was a purple spill and I just kind of took my brush and I, I was putting my brush in it, I, I was painting from the, the palette, which was my wood floor. <laughs> purple, purpleizing everything. And it's not so easy to work with. Yes. All things work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Thank you, Julie. Well, they did. Um, so, but Karen, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to work on the purple spill. Um, and then what I ended up doing is because it was a spill, you know, my thought was, all right, well, I'm kind of all committed to this and I got a lot of paper and some, and most of the paper was not little. Most of it was 18 by 24. And so I did a lot of 18 by 24 purple spill paintings. So then I started getting all my paper, my purple spill paintings, and I laid them out on the floor. And I had this, this house paint, this yellow house paint. All right. And I figured, okay, well, let me, you know, adjust the spill with a spill. So I started to um, drip on it. And, um, and so then, you know, the next stage was like this. You know, now I had dripped paint on my purple spill. And um, <laughs> yeah, you, you could spill some, but um, now I kind of know how to work with it. I mean, I can spill a little bit out, but I also know how to, uh, even, even some of the paper towel that I used um, to clean it up with served to, um, give me texture on some of them. So a, a whole new thing evolved out of that. And, um, you know, what you can see still kind of left on this one is how then I went in and, um, oh, that's too bright. There we go. Then I went in and I started, if I wanted to, like the edges didn't end up the way I wanted them. I went in with gesso or white marker and I started to mess around with those or add more open spaces and fill some in and use my markers. And, you know, it, it, it just gave birth to a lot of invention because I had everything to gain and nothing to lose. So, um, you know, it, it, it kind of works. I, uh, uh, the little ones like this, 
um, all looked very much calligraphic, um, probably because of the way I handled the brush. But like at, at that point, I was just picking it up with a quarter inch square brush and, you know, hitting it on a piece of um, eight by six paper. So I thought, request to be in my video, Diane, are you really requesting to be in my video or did you hit the button by mistake? Because you can be. I would love people to come in and like either talk a little bit and share a little bit or uh, or not. So Diane, you want to be in this video? Maury, do you want to be in this video? Uh, right? You're just looking at me, looking at you. And... Um, I'm gonna try it. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna call you in if you wanna come in. Go live with Diane. What kind of paper is that? Um, the paper that I did it on was mixed media paper, and um, I know I had a lot of good paper and it was nearby and had pans of it. So again, I didn't want to waste the paper at that point either. Um, this one that I did a practice one before you came on, I, um, okay, Helena, you guys say where you're from. Diane declined, okay, <laughs> to chickens. I don't believe you. I think you just press these things. You gotta tell me uh, if you wanna be in it, but, um, oh, paper. This is watercolor paper here, okay? It's a thick watercolor paper that is in a book. And uh, it's actually in our Arteza watercolor journal. They come in all different sizes. And, um, and they have watercolor paper in them. So it, it doesn't really matter. I mean, you could even do this on canvas. But it's really fun um, to, as Washington State, Columbia. Yes, yes. I, you and I someday are gonna drink some Colombian coffee. I'm, I'm, I'm hanging in with the Brazilians here, okay? Um, the Brazilians here. And I told everybody last week that my son has a new friend who um, came here from Brazil and uh, she's here on a work visa for six months. And um, so he's trying to learn Portuguese. And um, I thought it was for joining to watch you. <laughs> Shelly. Yeah, no, I just learned that because I said, I actually want to start having guests on, I think. Um, or if you do some work and, and you want to show it, then, you know, show it. I mean, I, I'm showing you a purple spill, you know? Um, but anyway, so, you know, if anybody has perhaps purple paint or some kind of house paint, all right, this is Sherwin-Williams. This actually drips really good, but it's older because I got some of these Valspars. I got some of these Valspars and they don't drip, okay? So I'll kind of show you that. But um, so you really have to practice, you know, with your, your drip factor <laughs> because they're not good drippers. They're probably great for painters, for house painters. Um, but they're not good if you deliberately want to drip. So painting your walls is great. You don't have to make a mess. Helena, I hope so. Yeah. Yes. I wanted to go on a missions trip really bad to Medellin, is it? It's um, the city of Eternal Spring, I think, um, years ago. And um, my husband was like, you can't go there. It's dangerous. And you know, everybody was saying, well, you know, missions are never in safe places. And so uh, I've been on two since then um, to Haiti, which was not safe at all. Um, you know, we had armed guards the whole time. And, you know, wherever there's unrest and, and, and not a good governmental structure, um, it's, it's a little bit, it's, it's very intense, you know. Um, so... Um, yeah, you just you just have to, uh, you know, stay alert and uh, go and do what you're there to do. And uh, and then I've been to El Salvador as well. And um, 
El Salvador, I absolutely loved. Both of them I absolutely loved. And I felt like I wanted to stay, even though it was so harsh and so hard. The, the work that we were doing on the missions was so relevant that I came home and I thought, well, what am I doing with my life? You know, I mean, I like to paint and stuff, but I mean, there were some real needs there. And, um, and the people were so amazing. There, there's so much poverty. And in El Salvador, there's, there's the gangs and it's very, very dangerous. We always had to go out with our shirts on. We had to watch our hand signals. We could do this, good job but we couldn't make any other hand signals because if you made any kind of hand signal that the gangs thought was theirs, they would shoot you. Or we couldn't lean up against certain walls that might've had some kind of graffiti or something, or they would shoot you. And if we did not have our shirts on, they do respect people that come in uh, missions. You live in Medellin, Colombia? What's your first name? We were going to go work with the kids who were kind of orphaned because of, um, you know, cartel and, 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 you know, the, the whole drug thing. And, and we've got it here too. Um, and, um, but after a while, I just, um, it does make you grateful. It does make you grateful. I mean, I came home from both places because we went in July and, you know, I, I easily complained, do we have air conditioning in the car? It's like, no, <laughs> it was so hot in El Salvador. The last day they take us to a nice resort, you know, they board us because you go from like five in the morning until 10, 11 o'clock at night. Uh, you, we're working, we're going on these ragtag buses and everything, and we're going all over and sometimes into neighborhoods. And uh, we're having programs for the kids and we're just carrying boom boxes and, and mics and we're doing projects with them and what happened. And we're sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, we're even, we even are allowed to go into schools in these countries because that's how, how desperate they are. Um, and people are afraid. Uh, they're afraid. Uh, a lot of them are orphans as well because they've lost parents or they've been extradited. Uh, they've tried to come back into the country. They try to come back in the country and somebody's got something against you. They want to kill you. So, you know, uh, we have that a lot of that in the inner cities and stuff. But um, yeah, it became that kind of they were pretty much running the show. So, um but it makes you, it, it, it changes you. It changes you a lot. And um, even with stuff like this that we're going through with Corona, I don't want to get sick. I, mean, I don't think I'm, I would be any good to anybody if I was sick. But it's like I have a hospital right up the street. And it's like, they're exhausted. And it's, you know, all I can do to just say, well, what difference does it make? You know, I'm 65 and um, I could be a pair of hands. I don't know. But if I really feel led to go, I'm, I'm going to go. Um, but that's another story. That, that's, that's the serious stuff. But anyway, how did I get on the whole mission strip thing? I don't know. But anyway... Maybe it's because we make the best we can with what we have and, uh, and, and to be grateful. But it really changed me. But uh, like I said, I go down these rabbit holes. And, and somebody remind me what I was talking about before I started telling you about missions. Um, but anyway, I think I'm going to turn this down. And I will um, do some, I'll show you a couple of different brands of uh, house paint that do um drip and other ones that don't you can see this is a scripted scripted teaching here um but uh yeah purple splash you can name it anything we could call this our purple slam session we have a purple slam session i like that anyway i'm gonna turn this down and um i'm just gonna show you some silly stuff like dripping and stuff because i don't want this to be hard i don't want this to be 
uh, you know, arduous. I just want to get together so we could chat. And I really wish we could chat back and forth. I can't read that that great. Thank you. Slam dunk. <laughs> Thank you, Art Design LA. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful is what I am. <laughs> Thank you. Says I'm grateful. I'm grateful, you know, because um, I really, I really feel as though having a lot of followers, uh, I, I do feel a, a sense of um, responsibility to, to, to manage that, you know, to steward that. And, um, you know, there's a lot of great artists out here. And, you know, I, I don't know why I took off. I don't know why somebody else takes off. I mean, I, I, I posted, you know, consistently because I make art a lot. Um, but it's no small thing to me. And it's not all about, um, I do want to sell my courses and I really want you guys to buy my courses, Path to Abstraction. And the reason that I want you to buy my courses is that they're, they're really good foundational courses on the elements of design and stuff. And so if you did, you know, we, we can take off in a lot of different directions, but you need to know those things. And I just can't, you know, teach it right out of the gate. Um, so you know, that is why I will speak about them. Um, and I really do care. And that's why I don't teach people how to paint like me. Um, today we are going to paint like me or you, but, um, because when I leave or when we shut down, you know, are you going to know how to paint without me? So I'm really invested in teaching people how to paint like them and it's harder. It's going to take work. And you're going to do a lot of monsters. I mean, awful. Um, but you have to go through that. And um, there's no shortcuts. And I'm studying with Nicholas Wilton now because he teaches exactly what I teach, which is really um, affirming to me because I didn't, I wasn't taught how to teach. I, I told you last week how I just kind of got recruited by a bunch of students. And then I, I had to learn. And it got to a point where, you know, we were just, you know, you know, I can only get them so many projects and then they, they had questions and it's abstract and what do you do next and all that kind of stuff. So I kind of backed into uh, learning and, um, and I believe that intuitive is good, but you know, you gotta know how to bail out. Um, and if you don't know how to bail out, then, um, you know, after a while, you know, you're either going to keep imitating somebody else, but it's never going to be your heart. So it's, it's never going to be them. And it's really important to find out who you are. And I think in these times, um, I think that we're, we're being sifted. And I think that we're finding out what, um, what's important and what's not. But anyway, um, I'm not the guru. <laughs> I'm just crazy, Pat. So I'm going to just um, thank you for saying that I'm a good teacher. And um, you're right. I do genuinely care. I lose sleep over stuff. I would drive home from my classes and somebody wasn't getting it. And I was just, how am I, I going to get to them? How am I going to get to them? And I would spend a week preparing a, a course, trying and, and seeing like what I could do to get that breakthrough, to get them to understand, you know, how to see. I was teaching them how to see. And um, that's a whole other thing. Um, and, and you have to learn a certain vocabulary. You know, I, I can throw all kinds of art jargon at you, which I had to read books to learn because I was a graphic designer, so I didn't have it. Um, but some people don't do that. And, um, but I did, <laughs> you know. When I was having my babies, I read up about Lamaz. I went to the Lamaz class and I'm going, what, what, what else you got? <laughs> like, nobody knows what's going on. I, I like want to know what's going to happen. You know, like I'm going to have a baby. You know, I need to know how to breathe, you know. But, um, but anyway, let's dip some paint, okay? All right, so I'm going to turn this down and I'm just going to show you just some simple things, you know, about dripping. All right? All right. Mm. 
Now, let's see. I think you can see it. Um, this is just a random piece of paper. Now, this is my old paint. This is an old Sherwin-Williams brand. Um, it's a sample color, but it, um, it drips, like, really good. And it is the one, the reason I have only a little bit in here is it is the one that I used for my original purple spills. And the reason I had it was I was testing paint for different walls. So I don't know if you can see that real good, um, whether you can see it better with the light on or with the light off. But it's just, you know, spillage, you know? And I mean, really, you can shake it. <laughs> You can spin it. Uh, and sometimes, you know, you just want to let it get to be like a long thing. And you can play around with it, you know? It's just fun. It's like silly string. Whereas this Velspar, and I bought a lot of these because these are relatively inexpensive. And you can, you know, get, you can paint a lot. And, um, and so I bought a lot of different colors and I kind of thought I would drip with them, but I like using them on really big canvases if I want to obliterate something. Uh, and, uh, oh, these are Chinese food sticks. Okay. I don't know if you all can see these, but these are Chinese food sticks. Um, and, um, so here's the Valspar. All right. And you could see like, it doesn't drip. Like, like, like nothing, you know? So uh, that was disappointing. So I had to figure out other ways to use it, but I have a whole thing of it. So you can tell I didn't use it a lot. So whenever I can get out again, I'm going to go back to, to Sherwin-Williams. Um, and there might be other paints, but I, I just suggest that you try different ones. And you probably have some, you know, how we save paint in our uh, closets for years. Um, use those. Use those. Um, they're good. And uh, last year, my husband took out so many good colors, and I did see them all open. He was trying to dry them, and I, uh, I saw them all open. Um, out in the driveway and it wasn't a good day for me but I, 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 they were going to dry and it was July and so I went out there and I put a canvas up against the car because they were in the driveway and uh, I just got a, you know a house paint brush and I started dipping into them and just covering the canvas and it was it was really really fun you you might be able to add more water to it. I've tried that, but sometimes it gets it gets too runny. You got to play with the viscosity, but um, but you can definitely try that. Um, if you want, I can try it for you. Um, I have a little. This is a, a mush container. It's backwards. I know, mush. <laughs> I can't eat sugar. A lot of sugar. So this is like one of my favorite desserts. It's coffee and coconut cream, and they're oatmeal that's soaked overnight, but they have this phenomenal flavor to them. And sometimes I will put unsweetened whipped cream on top. And for me, you know, that's like dessert. That's like banana split, because it's been a really long time since I had dessert like that. But anyway, I'm going to try to to put some of this in here and add some water to it. Um, but I have tried it in the past and it's been a while, but my experience was that it just got, most of the water ran out, but the paint didn't necessarily come with it. So, let me see. Okay, so I'm dipping my paint stick into the water all right and yes it is it's really really good and and the sands that went to the store and got me like a ton of them <laughs> and I, I told them not to i said it's not worth it but um 
You want to be in my video, Bernie? You, you want to be in my video? Okay, in a minute, in a minute, all right? Stay there. Let me just show you how this is not working. All right. So I wet it. I wet that thing. I totally wet it, and I also mixed water in with the thing there. It's totally, I put water on it. The only thing that's coming off is the water. See that? So to me, that's a no. But it's a yes, because you can buy some really pretty colors. And again, they're really good for obliterating uh, and on a really large paint. You're covering large areas. But then I end up putting acrylic and stuff over there. And then I, you know, I really seal it well. Um, so I prefer, you know, the, the one I have. Um, so Bertie, you really want to be in? You want to be in? I, I didn't fix myself up. So, oh, and these earrings, they're, they're, they're turned around backwards. Next week, uh, I'm thinking about using these as uh, an inspiration piece and maybe we could do some collage. Okay. You want to be in Bertie? All right. I'm going to see if I can have you in. Let's see if you come in. Do you have the camera on yourself? Hey, Patty. Hey. There's um, Lynn McCreary from hey guys. On, commonly known as Bird on a Whim. And, What's up? Um, she's my girlfriend from afar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember the day that you you did the painting that your husband put the paint out on the uh, driveway. Okay. All right. You remember that? Yep. And, and I do. I mean, I was not feeling good that day. I kind of felt like I had a stomach virus or something. But when I looked out the window. <laughs> You know, you know how this feels. And I saw purples and oranges and bright And it colors. was wasting. <laughs> and, and, and the reason I had all those colors is because I mix a lot of my colors in my house. So I had these like really intense colors and I just had to go out there and, and use it. Um, thank you for my earrings. Um, actually, this Sarah is Sarah shoot. shoot. I'm going to try to pull her in next week. And... Um, I sent her, I said I wasn't going to do this, but I can't keep secrets. You know, my son gave me my birthday present already, and he always waits. But um, anyway, um, and so she's going to take the purple spill, and she's going to try to interpret it as a pair of earrings. Oh, cool. And maybe we'll do a giveaway. I don't know. I mean, it's going to be really good for her. And um, I got a giveaway today. I won again. You did? You won again? Check it out. <laughs> She wins all the time. And I won from um, Amy, too, the one that goes to you and your friend. Amy Smith? No, Amy that did the uh, Out of Dust and Ash. Amy, A-I-M-E-E. -E. Yeah, Amy. Yeah. She might be on yeah. here. Yes. I think, I think yes, I won that. Amy also, Bison. two in a row. I win. I, I don't know what it is. I'm so lucky on here. My my painting ended up in breast cancer center. I hope so. Or to, or or did Birdie's painting end up in breast cancer? Oh, my, she got mine. Ah, oh, she said. Ended I still up. have to send you the information to go along with that, don't I, Laura? <laughs> I keep forgetting. Remind me. Okay. All right. So, what are you working on today? Me? Yes. Wow. <laughs> yeah, it started out, um, I, I put the post on yesterday, and it's just, um, I'm at that point where, you know, I'm having to fix stuff, so I'm actually using some of the design. You know, I'm, I'm going, I'm adding some contrast and uh, deciding if I want to use more warm or more cool or dark or light, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that yeah, gets to the point. That. It's fun to just freely do. And then all of a sudden you're like, okay, now I either have too much or I need to, to make those decisions. So that that's good. That, that's exactly. Helpful. I'm going to say goodbye. I'm really glad that you've been brave. You're the first one to step up.
Really? Um, okay. I just want to show everybody how to do a purple spill painting. Well, I got the teeth now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> now, she, she, well, see, I have pretty good teeth now, too. Yes. The reason I'm chewing gum, I tell you guys I all can. my secret, is I'm wearing Invisalign now. And with Invisalign, because I had to, my bite was really bad and I was grinding and grinding and that was exacerbating the stuff going on in my ears, which was throwing my balance off. So, you know, at 65 years old, I'm wearing braces, but I don't have them on to talk, but the nubbies are on my teeth. So what happens is if I don't have gum in my mouth, I'm going like this. Oh, oh yeah, I know that it's feeling. Because like my tongue is always <laughs> looking for like, what is that? The nu you know, yes. there's, there's nubbies. So yes. that's why I'm chewing gum. But anyway, okay, love yes, you see, there is, there is love. Patty cake, patty cake. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> love you, bye. You hey, we did it. All right, so um, let, let me get going on the purple spill because um, this time flies, you know, it really does. So you saw how, how I dripped, right? I mean, it's... You don't have to be a brain surgeon. It's just really fun. And even if you were to do it first and then dry it and then color in between the lines and things, I'm looking at this now, it, you know, it, it could necessitate some really cool things and you could really invent with that. Purple slam dunk. You know, Karen has a lot of good ideas for names. She's actually the one I wanted to, uh, to uh to call this you know everybody to tag and i did put a hashtag out there get get your stir cray on like get your cray cray on with the underscore before on uh get your stir cray on so whatever you're all working on like it's just like share it to our tribe on you know either she named she just said why don't you just call it hashtag pat art and talk and so that seemed like an easier thing to remember but I really like Get Your Stir Crayon. Um, so we could do both, but really start posting to it. And uh, it, it doesn't have to be the World Series. Okay, so so um, I'm gonna turn this down and um, you guys can do it now or you can do it later or you never have to do it, but I'll just show you. Um, I'll put the purple down and the yellow down. Now it has to dry, but then I can start to embellish the one that I, I set up. Does that sound good? Give me some love. Give me some love. Give me some love. Does the yellow paint dry thick and raised? Yeah, it does. It does. Um, but I like that. Sometimes I like that, Greta, to um, even to, to lay down as a ground for a painting that I know I'm going to work texturally on. And, um, and then I you know, uh, it, it, it'll, it'll have a lot of like peaks and valleys and stuff in it. So, but you can cover it right up with regular paint too. So you can add and subtract with the drips. So anyway, um, all right, I'm going to just kind of get my purple paint out and I'm going to kind of get this in focus. I'm going to work horizontally. Thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you. So here we go. Mean camera. Okay, I think we're in camera. Okay, so I have a lot of things to embellish at the end once it dries. I got, you know, different kind of markers and things just to add like little nuances. Um, and, and that's what makes them very, very personal. But I'm gonna, here's my paint and I'm gonna wet my brush a little bit. I'm, you can work with any kind of brush. I use these quarter inch flat brushes for everything. I mean, I just, maybe it's because I used to use them a lot with watercolor, but um, I just find that they, they can really take a beating and uh, I can scrub with them and things. So I'm just gonna kind of, you know, get in here and maybe do some kind of calligraphic marks, you know, like a, like a meandering thing, like I'm just, meandering around and I'm going to put some on thick because if I put it on thick it's darker and um, yeah, maybe some dots there I don't know anyway 
I could play with this. And you can play with these, you know, do a bunch of them and let them dry. Okay. And then if you don't like the negative space, when you do a piece like this, and you could do the whole paper, you don't have to keep it in the middle. All right. The, the purple spill ended up in the middle because of the way I was mopping them up. Um, so I made blueberry pie paintings, you name it. Uh, so anyway, um, but what you can do is you can take a look at your negative space and you can alter it by coming in with gesso or white paint and add and subtract. Or if you want more white in here, you can come in with gesso or a white marker and get some of that back. Um, you know, it, it's very forgiving. So, so that's all I'm going to do with that. And then I'm going to get my, and this will work all right while my, my purple paint is wet because it's not going to really blend because they're, they're different. This is acrylic paint, but it's acrylic latex paint. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to put some diddlies in here. See, this just gives me information, you know? I mean, you can make marks all different ways. Some people you know, don't have the patience. Like Birdie, you know, she likes to get in there and, you know, I know because I know her, uh, it's very therapeutic to just, you know, uh, start to lose and find things and see what happens. It might be interesting if I have some of this in the negative area too. I'll see what happens with that. But I would say don't do too, too much. But so here's a start. Okay. And you could do a bunch of starts. And um, they're, I think they're pretty. I mean, I was, I was like, really, I really had a good time, especially when I had them all laid out on the kitchen floor and I was working larger and uh, I was just bending over and I was holding my chopstick uh, up and my, my paint mixing stuff uh, from about two feet above. But uh, it was getting on the floor um, because of the way I was flicking it. But thankfully I have this tile that I, I was able to get it off of because it's not porous. So that was a good thing because I had to worry about the wood floor, which I did manage to save. So, so that's a start. And you can do a lot of starts and you can do them vertically. You can do them horizontally, but do pay attention because in, in, in this, you know, it, it's a simple technique. Uh, I can teach you something foundational and that negative space is space it's shape and if you don't find it particularly pleasing um you can mess around with it but do start to see that like sometimes we just only see what's going on here but take a look at the area that doesn't seem important because it is important to the overall uh unity of the piece Okay, it's very important. So start to, you know, be mindful of looking at negative space and the spaces between things and around things. Okay, uh, can you see this one? Give me some emojis. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it. Okay, so now I can go in and, and at the time I went in with, uh, I think it was a marker like this. I, I used a lot of Liquitex markers. I don't know if this one's still alive and well, but I can go in and I can go into some of these negative places and I can put some, some stuff. And I might, uh, just because this is sort of triangular, I might not make all the shapes triangular, but it's, it's okay uh, to have some repetition but not too, too much. See the paint there? I can, I can draw right over that. All right. And, um, you know, that's the saying I can't go outside the lines and mess with that. Um, 
I'm kind of working upside down because I think the other way is an orientation that I might um, prefer. But that already gives me gives me something, you know, an, another color to work with. And I like these colors because I, I call them jewel tones. If you look on a color wheel, um, you'll see that they kind of complement each other. Um, also, um, you know, an, an accent color, like in a whole different family, you can use these. Um, these are Marvy watercolor markers. I also have the Arteza watercolor markers. And um, I'm not totally committed. This is cadmium orange. So I'm going to try that um, because I, I love purple and orange. All right. So I might go in here and I'm not going to do like a whole lot of the same stuff. But um, hmm, I keep thinking this is wet, but it's not. It's not. Um, but it is raised, and it's. I, I really like it raised. I'm shaking like a leaf. Isn't that funny? I I I, I I've taught a lot, but I've never taught uh, not afraid. And um, and sometimes. Um, that kind of keeps you alert. And uh, I don't like it. <laughs> Nobody likes that anxious feeling. But, um, you know, uh, afterward, it's, it's quite a rush and you get through it. Uh, maybe I'll, you know, bring some of my orange stuff out of here, through here. I don't know. I have something hanging off there. You know, the possibilities are endless. Um, maybe I could use a different one of these and put some little balls at the end. So now I kind of have an earring kind of a thing. Um, and if you want to get I think I dropped it on the floor. Some, you know, white space back. Um, here's my big marker. It's a little bit dirty. Or if I want to change the edges of something, I, I can go in with this and I can start messing around with edges and things. I like that edge, but I'm getting rid of it for your sake. Um, so you can do that. And then maybe I'll just have that disconnected there. And uh, I know this is right in the middle, but I think if I turn it around, it'll be in the middle, like low, or maybe I'll do it here. Um, I'll get some white in here because I want to break up the, um, I want to get some more negative space. Um, and I may fill it in with something else, but I'm just kind of finding my way. And um, I'm not really thinking, I'm just kind of telling you um, why I might do something. Um, and I can even use, you know, the, this, the scribble scrabble, if it was still wet, it would pick up some of the color, but then I can spread the color with this. So, you know, um, <clears throat> I could get rid of that if I want to a little bit. Um, but you get the drift, um, fill some of these in, but I don't want to do it everywhere. See, when we start to, we like something and we do it and then we do it here and then we do it there and we do it here and we do it there and we do it here and we do it there. And then all of a sudden we go, no, that's not quite right. You know, that's because it's not special anymore because you overdid it. So then I could come back in with my white and I could start to do it here and here and here and here and here. And, you know, speak to, you know, the number of turquoise spots that I have. But then I'm going to look at it and I'm going to go, no, that's not quite right. And then I'll come in with something else and do the same thing. What you're basically doing is you're making wallpaper. Because uh, it's good to have a lot of something and a little of something else. Uh, I really went for a little in my original, one of my original pieces of the orange, you can see here, it's just a really, really tiny bit. 
And, but that gets the attention. Even though this is big, this is, this is quite a powerful little dot. So when you do something like that, you know, uh, think about it, okay? And uh, so then you can go in and you can, you know, you can use pencil, you can use um, China marker, whatever. Um, you know, just start doing some kooky things, you know, and having fun. Um, you can use a plain black marker. You know, and just maybe in your negative space, if you want to reclaim it and put some kind of texture in there. Little, little areas where it makes the piece explorable. Do you know what I mean by explorable? It just makes you, your eye wander through the piece. But you have to just be careful because if you fall in love with something uh, that might get all the attention, um, it, it, could, it could actually ruin the piece. Like I don't, I'm not in love with these. So like I, I might take my marker or my gesso if this won't get rid of it and you know, get rid of these. I could end up getting some gray, but if I get some gray or I'll just obscure it so that the, the light and darkness of it isn't so, so big, so different, I'll just get rid of that. And maybe when that dries, I'll do something different with that. Just so is the best if you want to make it look like nothing was ever there before. Okay. So it's 202. And I think that was a decent start. Let me take a look at you guys. Is that fun? See, it's just fun. And you really don't have to think. And we were talking a couple weeks ago about working distracted. And, um, you know, uh, it's pretty lively. And there's a lot I can do with it. And I could just have fun in my lap. Uh, and so can you. Um, but um, yeah, in invent, invent. This is a really good time. You know, every single thing doesn't have to go on your page. But you know what? Whatever you do, even if it's a, you hate it, post it to hashtag pat art and talk or hashtag get your stir underscore cray on no get your stir cray underscore on get your stir cray underscore on okay because it's like get your cray cray on all right and it can just kind of be our little tribe about what we do and then we can comment on each other's work and it's not just a one-way feed here okay and so you know think about next week too if you do something and you want to come on and you want to show it and you don't want to show your face that's okay just to show your art because like we're not here to judge we're just here to to you know cheer each other on these times are 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 very difficult and um but there's also joy to be had and as long as we're alive right now in this minute you know, let's, let's leave evidence that we lived. And um, I'm just going to pray, pray us out here because um, there's so much need. Um, and so if, if you guys don't want to pray, that's okay. Get click off. Um, I pray in Jesus name. Um, I'm just going to pray. I'm not, I'm not going to make excuses. Uh, Father God, I just lift up all these artists on line here now. I know that there's so much need in the world that some of them have loved ones who are sick. Some of them have loved ones that work in hospitals and healthcare or have to work in grocery stores and keep going. And there's anxiety around that. And I just pray that you, you give them peace and you let them feel your nearness. I pray for um, the homes, um, you know, some homes, uh, people are gathering together and it's a joyous, it, it, they're, they're, they're appreciating the downtime together. 
but we know that in some homes it's not good and some kids who would rather not be home um might be stuck or a husband and wife might be have a very volatile relationship whatever that is i want to pray especially for them uh to to have forgiving hearts and 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 for you to keep them safe and to give them endurance and strength and uh fortify them with your love and i just want to thank you that today is good friday and um so for me it's a very important day it it is the day that that the lord was crucified that's what it's all about um and it was a dark day and a somber day but only a few knew sunday was coming and that he would raise from the dead and really that is the pivotal point that all of christianity hangs on and i just pray that people come to know you in a personal way not a religious way not a church way not through their parents or whatever but just one on one that they know that they're forgiven and that you forget you said you would remember their sins no more that you would cast them as far as the east is from the west so either you're the craziest man that ever lived and a lunatic or you are the christ and you say we are forgiven and you can reunite us with the father and fill that hole that we all have that we just think if a son came home or a daughter was well or something was different then everything would be okay and then it happens and there's there's still hope uh and i just pray that you just resurrect everything that seems dormant and dead in each one's life and that um let them know that you love them and i know that i love them and thank you in jesus name amen i love you guys thanks for listening and uh i'll see you next friday all right post to at um pat art and talk or at get your stir cray on okay love you bye bye hey make some purple spills okay bye bye <laughs>